Thank you, everybody, for joining the open forum today. This is uh, the CSRU open forum where we'll be discussing the CRAX pathway. I'd like to thank our team. There's the CSRU CRAX team who's been working on this for quite some time now. With us in, on this team is Jeff Granton, myself, Dave Nagpal, Ashraf Fayad, who's a cardiac anesthetist who spearheaded the initiative, uh, Donna Van Boxmere, I'd like to thank Gina, Mike Cullen, Brittany Meisner, who helped us with a lot of things. And I'd like to thank Belinda and Tim and Larry for their RT leadership. I'd like to also thank Jerry and Michelle for their uh, leadership from the nursing standpoint. So uh, I'll start off by introducing what CRAX is. So a lot of us have heard about ERAS. So ERAS is Enhanced Recovery After Surgery. There is a cardiac version of that, Enhanced Recovery After Cardiac Surgery. And CRAX is basically uh, our LHSC version of the ERAX pathway. So we added an S, so we're calling it the SWIFT Enhanced Recovery After Cardiac Surgery. What it basically is, it's just our LHSC version of ERAX. What do we hope to gain from implementing the CRAX pathway? What we want to do is facilitate early discharge of simple, uncomplicated cardiac surgery patients from CSRU. And I want to highlight simple and complicated because uh, that's really key to the entire pathway. You're not eligible to be on the CRAX pathway if there's any complexity in the procedure or in the patient themselves. Our goal is to reduce their time on the ventilator, reduce their ICU length of stay, potentially reduce their post-operative length of stay as well. And we want to do all of that in a safe and a patient-centered manner. So how will we be doing that? So our aim is for early extubation. Ideally, we'd want these patients extubated in the OR or within an hour of CSRU arrival. We'd like to reduce their CSRU length of stay to four hours and we would like to transfer them up to a CRAX unit on six inpatient, which is an enhanced recovery area on six inpatient, a monitored unit where they will be taken care of overnight. And so beyond the four hour stay in CSRU, they'll be going up to the CRAX unit, staying there overnight, and then going to the regular cardiac ward. So let me go back to simple and complicated cases. And I'd like to define that a bit further. So in order to be a CRAX candidate, you have to fulfill certain preoperative criteria. And if you fulfill these criteria, you'll be labeled as a CRAX patient in the OR list. And once you've, you've gone into the OR, there will be certain criteria for the intra-op period. So how long you've been on a pump, whether things were complicated or not. And I'll go through these criteria in detail shortly. And then if you fulfill these intraoperative criteria, you go off to CSRU and you'll be handed over as a CRAX patient to the CSRU team. And then you need to fulfill a certain set of post-op criteria in CSRU uh, before you're able to get discharged up to the CRAX unit within the four hour or at the four hour timeline. So we'll, I'll go through the criteria. So first, the pre-op criteria. So these patients will need to fulfill certain inclusion criteria. They need to be presenting for a single procedure, a single cardiac procedure, and that could be done either through a sternotomy or a mini sternotomy or a mini thoracotomy. So minimally invasive cases will also be candidates for this. Robotic cardiac procedures will be CRX candidates. Off-pump cardiac procedures will be CRX candidates. They just need to be a single cardiac procedure, not a combined cabbage valve an isolated cabbage or an isolated valve, you'd be a candidate. Endovascular cardiac procedures like TAVIs, these are already part of a rapid wean pathway. So we already have a very expedited pathway for our TAVI patients where they will sometimes even bypass CSRU altogether. But if they do come to CSRU, they're, always, they're there for four hours and then they go up to the ward. So it's nothing new. We've been doing, uh, you know, CRAC sort of management uh, of sorts uh, previously, there, there needs to be no, none of these exclusion criteria. So if they have any of these exclusion criteria, they will not be a candidate for CRAX. If they are frail, they're not a candidate for CRAX. If they're unable to walk independently, if they're getting a redo cardiac procedure, if they're getting an emergency cardiac procedure, if they're getting any procedure involving aortic repair, they are not a candidate for CRAX. If they have pre-existing left ventricular dysfunction, and we'll define that by an EF of less than 
first they have pre-existing moderate to severe RV dysfunction, then they're not a candidate for CRAX. Also, if they have end-stage renal disease on renal replacement therapy, if they're morbidly obese with a BMI greater than 40, if they have untreated OSA, they're not a CRX candidate, and if they have pre-op dementia or delirium, they're definitely not a CRX candidate. So these are all the preoperative criteria, and I will highlight that we've had buy-in from the entire cardiac surgery group pretty much, so all cardiac surgery patients will be screened for eligibility, and if they're a candidate for CRX, they will be labeled as such going to the OR. So uh, what are the intraoperative criteria? So they need to have spent less than two hours on pump. So any prolonged pump runs will automatically exclude them from the CRAX pathway in the intraoperative phase. They need to have no concerns coming off pump, no concerns on pump either. They need to come off with their own rhythm, either sinus or their own baseline rhythm, but they cannot be pacemaker dependent. They need to be hemodynamically stable either on minimal pressors or no pressors at all. They need to have normal gases and pH on their gases in the OR. They need to have no evidence of intraoperative coagulopathy, no evidence of excessive bleeding. Their temperature needs to be normal thermic greater than 35. Their hemoglobin needs to be reasonable greater than 80. And if they are extubated in the OR, they need to have some reasonable pain control. In terms of exclusion criteria from the OR, if they have a prolonged pump run greater than two hours, they're automatically excluded. Or if they've got metabolic derangements like a skyrocketing lactate, uh, they would be excluded as well. If they need multiple attempts to come off bypass, they will be excluded from the pathway. If they are pacemaker dependent, if they're requiring excessive pressors, like either two or more pressors or one high dose presser, if they've got significant metabolic disturbance on their gases or on their blood work, if they require excessive transfusion, and we've defined that, if they've required more than two units of packed cells in the OR, then they would be excluded, or more than four units of FFP, or more than one adult dose of platelets. Or if there are any other concerns regarding extubation or concerns from cardiac surgery or anesthesia. So these are our intraoperative criteria, and they need to check off all these checkboxes uh, in order to be handed over to us in CSRU as a CRAX patient. Now the goal is to extubate them in the OR uh, on, the, on the operating table once the surgery is concluded or at the most within an hour of CSRU arrival. Now some of these patients will take a while to wake up. If they're not able to extubate them in the OR, then they don't necessarily need to hold up the OR to get them extubated. We would prefer them to come extubated. But if they're taking time to wake up, it would be okay for them to come to us intubated we do have a CRAX rapid wean protocol where our RTs will hopefully be trying to get these patients extubated within an hour of arrival. So if there's a holdup in the OR, that's okay. You can send them intubated, provided they're close enough to getting extubated. And so that will be the anesthesiologist sort of plan, to, to plan it for extubation at the end. They'll obviously have certain things that they'll want to do. Likely they'll want to minimize benzos. They'll likely want to reverse muscle relaxation at the end of the case, potentially ensure good analgesia. Things like a parasternal block would help with pain control post-extubation. So there's a few things from an anesthesia side that can be done to aim for extubation by the end of the case. Now, once, they're, once they've arrived to the CSRU, if they've arrived intubated still, then they will be assessed for extubation on arrival to CSRU, and then queue 15 minutes thereafter with a goal to get them extubated within the first hour. We do have weaning criteria for that CRAX rapid wean protocol. We have, we have mentioned that the spontaneous breathing trial needs to be only five minutes before they're eligible to be extubated, which is very similar to what we do in the operating room. So essentially the criteria for the CRAX rapid wean are are what we do in the OR. It's really an OR extubation. And so they're not, they're, they're similar to what we do in the ICU, but they're more expedited and uh, we're, less, we're less stringent with some of the criteria, and I'll go through them in a second. So what are the CRAX rapid wean criteria for our RTs? So Tim and Linda put this together uh, with uh, myself and Jeff. 
So they need to be on inotropic or, or not on any inotropic or vasopressor infusions, but if they are, they need to be not escalating with their doses. And if they are on more than five mics per minute of either epi or norepi, then the uh, CSU consultant needs to be consulted before extubating. They could still override, they could still extubate, but they need to be aware. Core temperature needs to be greater than 35.5. Their blood gas needs to be reasonable prior to extubation. We do expect them to come from the OR a little bit on the acidotic side, just from the hypoventilation en route from the trip. But there will be an order online for RTs to repeat gases Q15 minutes until they fulfill criteria. So their pH needs to be greater than 7.28 prior to extubation. Their PF ratio needs to be greater than 200. Their FiO2 on an FiO2 of less than 0.5. So their gas exchange needs to be reasonable. They need to have a spontaneous minute ventilation of greater than 4 liters per minute on per support of 5, PEEP of 8 or less and have a respirate of less than 30 breaths per minute. And then they need to be rousable, responsive, at least opening eyes to voice, preferably even squeezing fingers to command. Adequate neuromuscular block reversal will be confirmed by the anesthesiologist on handover. So they just need to tell us that they're, it's been a long time since their muscle relaxant, they should not have any of that on board, or uh, we've actually reversed them in the OR so they should no longer be paralyzed. We are not mandating the five-second sustained head lift because that's not necessarily what we do in the operating room, but if they're able to do it, well and good. If not, they would still be a candidate to get extubated. And then they would get an SBT, a spontaneous breathing trial, for five minutes, and they would be extubated if they're successful. So for patients that are identified as being difficult to intubate from the OR, they will need a physician assessment prior to extubation in CSRU. And as you would normally do, they would be pre-oxygenated, all patients would be pre-oxygenated prior to extubation for two minutes on 100% uh, FiO2. And similar to OR extubations, when anesthesiologists are extubating patients, they are usually there and closely following and making sure the patient's doing well and does not need re-intubation. Typically, anesthesiologists will not just extubate and walk away. So here in CSRU, what we'll do is the CSU physician will have to be available in the unit if we're doing your CRAX rapid extubation, just in case. Uh, what we have here is reintubation equipment needs to be available prior to extubation, and a CSRU fellow or staff needs to be present in CSRU for a patient to be extubated on the rapid wean CRAX pathway. So what will it look like for us in CSRU? So hopefully it will be no different than what we normally do. We'll follow them up for chest tube output, for urine output, for pain control. They'll be spending four hours with us. Uh, hopefully if they're fulfilling criteria, they'll be assessed for discharge at the end of the four hour mark. During the first hour, they're hopefully either extubated from the OR or extubated in the unit. And then we've moved up their blood work to the three hour mark instead of the four hour mark. So at the three hour mark, we want them to get a blood gas and a CBC. And that way we will have the results of those by the time four hours are over. And if these are okay and they fulfill the rest of the discharge criteria, then they'll be good to go. At the four hour mark, we will assess them for discharge criteria and I'll go through these in a second. And if they do fulfill discharge criteria, we will take the art line out and then they will go up to the CRAX unit with their central line in situ. So just the art line comes out before they go up, but they will go up with their central line and obviously with their chest tubes. So while they're in the CSRU, they will likely get a POCUS, a point of pure ultrasound of their heart. That is not something that we in CSRU need to worry about. We will not be calling to get this done. This is something that anesthesia will do if they are available. And they are collecting data on this. They're looking at LV function. They're looking at pericardial collections and seeing if that influences the pathway at all and seeing if that influences their rate of readmission. The POCUS is not part of the discharge criteria. And as I said, it's not something we need to worry about. If anesthesia is available, they'll come and do it themselves. If not, they can still go upstairs, not a problem, okay? So what are the CSRU discharge criteria? There's a few of them. There's respiratory criteria, there's hemodynamic parameters, there are surgical parameters, and there are certain global parameters that I'll go through. So up on the CRAX unit, they will not be taking anybody with on greater than 50% by face mask or nasal prongs. Um, 
So they will not be taking patients on AIRVO or BiPAP or NIV as part of our discharge criteria for the CRAX pathway. They need to be on face mask, 50% FI2 at the most, or nasal prongs at the four-hour mark. They will get their blood gas at the three-hour mark, and they need to have acceptable blood gases at that time. PCO2 is a 55, PO2 greater than 70, normal pH, lactate that's trending down and within reason. So if their lactate is anything greater than 3.5, they're obviously not a candidate to go, but they also need to be trending down. So if they get a little bit of reperfusion, rise in their lactate from the OR, and they come to us with a lactate of 3.9, if the next lactate is 3.3, 3.2, and it's trending down, then we'd still be okay sending them upstairs. Their hemodynamic parameters for discharge include a systolic of greater than 95 for the past two hours. This should be on no vasopressors or inotropes for the past two hours, meaning in the last, you know, in the, in the third hour, fourth hour, they should not be on anything in terms of pressors or inotropes. Their heart rate needs to be within range, 50 to 110. They should not be pacemaker dependent. Their test tube output needs to be within reason for that timeline, so less than 100 mLs an hour for the past two hours prior to discharge. Their total drainage should be less than 500 cc's since CSRU admission. Their chest x-ray and their ECG need to be re reviewed by our CSRU staff prior to discharge, and there need to be no concerns identified. The general criteria for discharge up to CRAX unit include the patients being awake, obeying commands, or at least rousable and oriented. They need to have reasonable pain control. Their urine output needs to be reasonable, greater than 30 mLs an hour, temperature greater than 36, no significant lab or metabolic derangements, and no other concerns identified by the CSRU team. If we have concerns regarding pain control, then APS is available on consultation. So that will be something that we'll have to call for, call for if we have concerns with pain control, they're happy to get involved. They're happy to order a PCA if needed. As I said, CPAP, BiPAP, high flow, all that will not be something they can take up in CRAX unit, but we are free to use these here in CSRU immediately post extubation. They need to be off these prior to going upstairs and stable though. So, so we can use these as a transition, but they need to be stable and off and on face mask or nasal prongs prior to going upstairs. So this is, in summary, what the pathway will look like. So we have a cardiac surgery patient. If they fit inclusion criteria, they'll be labeled as a CRAX patient. If they fulfill or all their intra-op criteria, they will be handed over to CSRU as a continued CRAX patient. If they fulfill their criteria during their CSRU stay, for discharge at the four-hour mark, they will continue to be a CRAX patient. They'll go upstairs to the CRAX unit, and they will stay there for overnight, and hopefully then uh, off to the cardiac ward. While they're on the CRAX unit, they will be under, care, under the care of CVT. So CVT team, CVT resident, and CVT staff will be the MRPs on the CRAX unit. If they need any help from an ICU standpoint, CCOT can be called on standby, but only if they're called Will they, uh, will they show up? And if they need an echo for an reason, the anesthesia service is happy to do that as well. Any questions, comments, concerns? Let's open it up. <laughs>